Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the wonderful world of War Thunder. And here we are looking at the Soviet reserve aircraft, and next in the line, the I-15R, which I think is the most primitive of the I-15s, but if it's not, well there you go. Uh, due to popular demand, I will be doing a hangar section of this uh, well, if you want to call it a review, then go ahead. So, what about the I-15? Well, it's free to repair and all that because it's reserve. Let's take a look at the armour. It's got a little bit of armour here, 8.5 millimetres, which means that at the tiers this thing will be fighting at, you know, everything firing at it will be even millimetre machine guns. It'll be small calibre machine guns. This tiny bit of armour here is actually quite potent, which means that killing the pilot from behind is very difficult, or damaging the engine. However, these flight surfaces, you know, as with any plane, they are easily destroyed. Here's the pilot sitting right here, where you'd expect him to be in the cockpit of the aircraft. Uh, a lot of the time, if you're going in down at an angle, you know, if you're diving on it, which is what you should do with an I-15, or with any of the Chikers, because they are very manoeuvrable aircraft, you should be diving on them when they least expect it. Which means, a lot of the time, you'll actually be able to get the pilot, because you're diving down upon him. But then, that's the same with most aircraft, isn't it? Apart from the Hinchkill and the Sturmovix. This has the most potent armament of all the reserve aircraft. Four whole machine guns. They are PV-1 machine guns. They have, you know, they've got a standard rate of fire. It's the same as the, well, pretty much the same as the American 3rd caliber machine gun you get with the pea shooters. But it's got four of them, which means it will make short work of any aircraft you encounter. Ah! Short work, indeed! Plus you get 3,000 rounds of ammunition. You can just spray and pray all day. Hey, that rhymes. Uh, unless your guns overheat, of course. They are prone to overheating, but not quite as... Well, not nearly as much as the... Uh, the Shkass machine guns you get later on in the Russian aircraft. Big bad fuel tank here. One big fuel tank, unless you don't have any in the wings. This is protected by the little bit of armour which is back there. Uh, you've got the cooling systems up here, where you'd expect them to be behind this engine. Now the engine is actually quite tough. Uh, it's rare that you'll be experiencing engine problems with this thing. Plus, it's a radial engine, so if your water cooling system's damaged, well, you don't have any water cooling system to worry about. So, what's the problem? You do have an oil cooling system, and that will overheat the engine if it's damaged, of course, but that's the same with anything. Now, this is a biplane, and with the recent um, damage model updates, uh, most aircraft are a lot less durable. They are a lot more easy to shoot down. And that goes the same with the Chaika. I mean, this thing used to be indestructible. Well, not indestructible. You could destroy them, but only if you knew the simulations. Nowadays, though, you know, a few shots in the wings, especially with larger caliber machine guns or even cannons, the wings will just crumple and the thing will fall out of the sky. That's quite commonly how you dispatch of these things. Now, flight characteristics, well, it's a Chica, it's the most maneuverable thing in the universe, including all those m flying saucer type things from. Uh, 4th of July film, was it called? Independence Day. Yes! If they'd been flying Chike as well, there'd be nothing to worry about. But they weren't, they were flying American aircraft. Um, it's not the fast, in fact, I think it's one of the slowest aircraft, well, fighters at least. So, if you're fighting these things, you want to, you know, boom and the zoom. However, with the other reserve aircraft you're given, I mean, the Americans, whoops a daisy, they do okay with their pea shooters because they're a little bit faster than most other things. The Japanese, they do okay against the um, 
Chikers as well, which is just as well, because a lot of the time the Japanese will be fighting the Russians on Kalkin Gol and, and China and places like that. The British, oh dear me. Oh dear. What have we got? Oh, we've got a Fury. Two piddly little machine guns. Not very maneuverable, not very fast. Oh no, that's not so good. Germany, well you've got those funky funky lasers, don't you? So you should be okay against Chikers, but then again, you don't really fight them all that often. It's usually Americans and British. Oh, I suppose you do fight them occasionally. But yeah. In fact, I think the um, HE-51 is almost as maneuverable as this thing, so it's not a bad idea to turn fight with them. The trouble is, aircraft like the I-15R are often accompanied by lag threes, which you get at battle rating 1.3, I do believe. Here it is. Nope, 1.7, so you're alright, but you still find many of them. So while you're swooping and diving on the uh, I-15s, oh no, there's a lag. Oh, it's blown me apart with its cannon. But there you go. Shall we take this out for a spin? I don't see why not. Here we are in Korea. Now about um, 60 to 70 percent of your battles in this aircraft will in fact be on this map. There is no wartime emergency power with this air uh, with this airplane, but that's nothing to worry about. We're in reserve. Now I wonder if anybody else is going to crash. There we go. Someone's crashed. Looks like we're the last one taking off. But that's nothing to worry about, because high altitude is not where this thing does best. This is a low altitude, turning, spinning, pirouetting, aerobat... No, I'm not going to do it now. Aerobatics super shaker. If you're playing in simulator mode, you've got a nice all-round view, but you've got this stupid telescope in front. I mean, you can see stuff through it, but mm, it's not all that great now, is it? If you zoom in... Oh, look! I can actually see through it now! Is that the ground coming up at me very, very quickly? Oh, you've crashed. Bugger. So, let's see how we're doing. Now, the reason I think this thing is the first of the I-15s is because this is pre-war camouflage, or not camouflage, but parade camouflage, I do believe. Because you'd think it was snow camouflage, however, it's got red bits. Plus it looks permanent. With most snow camouflage with the Russian aircraft, you can sort of faintly see the summer camouflage underneath. Whereas this thing, it's been painted by a craftsman worthy of his painting skills. Which leads me to believe that this is in fact a parade camouflage I-15, which would mean it's a pre-war I-15, which would in turn mean that it is the oldest of the I-15 variants in the game of War Thunder. Right, here we go, up into the middle of the map. We are seriously under-tiered here. We've got MiG-3s, we got I-153s. Those are tier 2 point something, I believe. Either way, they shouldn't be here, or I shouldn't be here. The I-153 is a lot faster, a lot more maneuverable, and it, it fires death rays, basically. Phases. Set phases to annihilate. Dash what Chica pilots say. Whereas we're stuck with these lower fire uh, yeah, well, fire rate machine guns. Although they should be perfectly adequate to deal with most targets we encounter. Now, most of the time, you'll be fighting. Uh, buffaloes, Brewster buffaloes, F2As, and that whatnot, and also hurricanes, 
probably. Looks like they're all gravitating towards the west. Which probably means they have encountered the enemy. Yep, there they are. O2SU. OS2U, I believe. Uh, I mean. Poor bugger. He don't know what's coming for him. Okay, what do we got? We got some sort of aircraft. It's a P-36. Oh. We'll let the MiG-3s fif uh, MiG deal with that. MiG-15s. <laughs> How very droll. Gladiator, we can outturn him. We can probably outrun him as well. We're Russian. No, you can't outrun a gladiator. But you can outturn a gladiator. Oh, what's he doing? He's dead. He crashed. Dear, dear Captain Duck. You're out of luck. How very, very droll. Right, let's see what else we got. There'll probably be a PBY lurking about somewhere up in the sky. The mighty majestic sky whale. Then again, they might all be dead by the time we get there. Which would be ever so disappointing, wouldn't it? Okay, it's a biplane, so you decrease throttle when you dive. Lest you rip thine wings off. Everybody's on. Oh crap! He's a lot closer than I thought he was. Oh, no, 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 don't shoot me! It's my girl. Okay, I'm gonna get out of the way here. Seems as everybody's engaged seagull mode. Yep, they have. They killed him. How are we doing? Minor damage. I probably shouldn't have flown in front of everyone like that. That was a rather stupid thing to do. Mm, P26? Nope, everybody's going after him. I'm going after this Nimrod. Along with Big Betty in a IF-153. And he's been evaporated, eviscerated, annihilated, destroyed. What have you? See if we can actually shoot at him. Yeah, I got him. I stole that kill totally. We're gonna be stealing kills like a pro. That's what I do sometimes, if I can. But then, of course, there's the argument. If, if it was yours to kill, it, you would have killed it. That might, of course, just be an excuse that us kill stealers say to make us feel a little bit better about the heinous crimes which we commit. But there you go. Although I make a point of not shooting at aircraft that other people have set on fire or removed the wings off. Well, that is a blatant kill steal, now isn't it? Hmm. Yeah, indeed. Quite. Hmm. Yeah. Evil teddy bear is dead in his O2 SU. However, no, there's no point going over there. Well, that was short, and you know why? It's because we're Russian. We are on the Russian team. We have best low-tier planes. I mean, look at what we got. We got I-15, I-153s, I-16s, MiGs. No lags, interestingly enough. But most of the time, it's just a, it's a, s a swarm of lags. Lagging. You can do it! Who's this? What are you doing? Crazy person. Yep, that swordfish is doomed. He's doomed. Well, that was rather boring, wasn't it? 
Let's see if we can get some more exciting footage with the next battle. <laughs> Right, this time we're in China, fighting against the Imperial Japanese Army, along with some Imperial Japanese Navy aircraft I'll expect to see. And we're not the last in the air this time, we've got a BB-1 behind us. BB-1. BB-1. But everyone else is miles and miles ahead of us. But there's nothing to worry about. We'll simply pick up where they leave off. Now this thing is very maneuverable. However, the Japanese do have some aircraft which can, uh, if not outmaneuver, at least match with the maneuvering of those aircraft. Things like the Kai-27, I do believe. And even the Kai 10s. They can outmaneuver this thing at low. no, high speed, probably. Yeah, high speed. Plus, they're a lot faster than this thing. And have a better climb rate. Uh, basically, better in most ways. What we do outmatch them in is, however, firepower. We have four machine guns that go like. Pitch, pitch, Whereas they have only two machine guns that go like... Which is pretty terrible. And they usually run out of ammunition by the time they shoot anything down. We've got TB3s! Holy crap. Come on, let's get to the action! Slow, slow aeroplane. It is reserve, after all. Alright, we've got a Kai-43 over there. There's no way we're going to be outrunning him. And he might even match us in maneuverability. Kai-10. <laughs> How are we doing? Oh, we've lost five people already. They've lost five as well. Although one of them was an AI. So let's get stuck in! Now oh, we lost another one. Bye bye bass. Bye bye. Where's BB1 buddy going? He's probably gonna go eat the ground targets, probably. Yes. That's probably where he is going, indeed. Right, at high speed, or at least what is high speed to this aircraft, it becomes pretty unstable. You know, it becomes very difficult to get the guns on target if you're chasing anything into a dive. You know, it does this. It has to roll all the way over to a 90 degree angle before you can pitch up and get the guns on target. Whereas the Japanese, with their Kai 10s and their Kai 27s, don't have that problem. They're pretty stable aircraft. I mean, they're not that stable. Because they're very, very light, aren't they? They're very light aircraft. Very, very... Ah! Okay, let's engage in dogfight. Here we go. I hope nobody interferes. Don't interfere! This is my kill! Mine! He's a smoking. And he's going down. It's devastating firepower! Oh, oh, he's doing a head on. Hang on, I'm in a chica. I can head on anything. On the head. Header. Stop saying that. And we've got the ammunition to spray a bit. Spray our ammunition around. Why do I keep saying stuff? 
There is no escape for you. He's doomed, pretty much, unless he, he pulls something out of his hat. Pulls some crazy maneuver. Uh, and here's where the sound cut off for the video. Isn't it lovely that way that happens? Anyway, so yeah, we kill... No, we get the assist on the... Kai-10. Proving how much more maneuverable this thing is than the Kai-10 at low altitude at low speed. Which is what we're at. And then we spot a Kai-43 up ahead. Hassling one of our uh, SU-2s. Now, you can see how just how slow this aircraft is. It's, it's very slow. I think it is the slowest of the reserve aircraft, but it makes up for that with all that maneuverability and the firepower, as you know. So we're approaching, checking behind, and we spot an A5M4 behind. And now the video's frozen. Oh, there we go. So yeah, I think, no, nah, he's not going to go after me, I'll just ignore him. And then go after this Kai-43. But then I hear this strange noise behind me. Any moment now. And, oh, look, no, it's the A5M4. He decided to chase me down. But luckily, this thing is so maneuverable that I can make up for the mistake that I made. That would have gotten me killed in most other planes. Or at least in less maneuverable aircraft. So I go after the A5M4. However, he's being smart. He's not turning with us. The Kai-43 is not so smart. And we get a few hits into him. And he's smoking away. Well, then he dives. And we cannot follow. Although he's still turning. Because the Japanese aircraft are very maneuverable. People do tend to use turn fighting as their main strategy. The um, A5 attacks again, but we manage to evade him after hearing his aircraft approaching from behind. And we go after him, but we can't catch anything due to the fact that we are very slow. Now I think, personally, that... Oh, go for a head-on. And he kills my pilot. Now usually in that situation the I-15 will shred up, as they say, the A-5. However, some people can get lucky now and again. And in this case, the A-5M pilot did, with his two teeny tiny little 7.7mm putt-putt machine guns up against my hailstorm of Soviet firepower. But there you go. That's the way that the cards fall, or something like that. So, back to the hangars. After this exciting and interesting match, and my overtly enthusiastic commentary. Not so much money and jewellery this time, but that's because the match isn't finished yet, and because it's reserve. So, that's not particularly interesting, but there... Oh, there you have it. The I-15 are the first of the Soviet reserve aircraft and in my opinion you know, I don't really like it very much it's too slow for me I prefer speed over maneuverability which is something that the Germans also well most people found out eventually that's why we're we've got jet fighters nowadays and not biplanes speed trumps maneuverability it gives you more options because yes, you can outturn something and get on its tail if it turns with you, but if it doesn't, if it dives away and you're not faster than him, well, he's got the fight, he can fight on his own terms. And he can just go up into the altitude and then drop down and attack you whenever. So yeah, you got a bit of armor there. Uh, ideally, that would be at the front, I'm saying. You know, an armored windscreen would do nicely for those head-on passes, but you can't get everything you do with what you got. And in this case, the armor's behind you. 
even though most of the time the enemies will be attacking from either the front or from above. But other than that, uh, it's many people's favourite reserve aircraft, and in many people's opinion it's the best one. I personally think that the HE-51 no, the Ka the Kai-10, sorry, the Kai-10 is the best reserve aircraft in War Thunder. However, the HE-51 is also very good, and I think it is in fact better than the I-15, because it's just that little bit faster, gives you more options, and it's compatible with the maneuverability. I mean, at low altitude, slow speed, this thing can outturn anything in the game, apart from the upgraded Chica, the I-153. But then again, that's an I-153, is one of the Russian superweapons. Anyway, there you have it, the I-15R, drawing this to a close. Hopefully you'll join us for the next one, where we will be investigating the BT-5 Soviet Reserve Tank. There it is. Isn't it marvellous? I'm not a huge fan, I prefer the T-26 for some reason, but there you go. Thank you very much for watching, and bye-bye.